and welcome to a new video. So in the previous one, we briefly touched the topic of arguments. So we say that when we write something after the name of the print object, this is actually going to be the word that gets printed on the console every time the print objects receive some data from the patch. So in this case, for example, B refers to this print object, C refers to this print object and so on. But what are arguments exactly? Well, arguments, we can say that they are options that we write inside the object itself in order to set some internal variables of the object. So arguments are always written inside the object box after the name of the object, so always leaving a space and they have to be written in a specific order. So sometimes we got more arguments. So for example, with the JIT matrix object, uh, this object has a bunch of arguments, so a bunch of options that can be set for the behavior of the object, and they must be written in a certain order. So we are not going to examine yet the arguments of the JIT matrix object, but it's important to remember that arguments must be written in a certain order. So this means set option number one, this sets option number two, and option number three and four, and so on. So arguments set up options for objects and must be written in a certain order. So let's delete the JIT matrix and let's actually care about an object that is more familiar with us, which is the plus operator. The plus operator itself also takes an argument. So let's create a new one and let's create two integer number boxes and connect it to the inputs of the plus operator. And then let's create another one and connect it to its output. So we say that if we first change the number that goes in the cold inlet, then the one that goes in the hot inlet, then we get the result of this addition. But the plus operator accepts also an argument that it is used then as the default value to be summed to 10. So for example, I could delete this number here and I could say, I simply want to sum five to whatever comes inside. So what do I do? I go to modify the plus operator object box, I write inside a five, leaving a space after the plus. So the plus is the name of the object. And this five is actually the argument. In fact, we even get this pop-up box that says us that this object takes one argument and this is the initial number to sum. So if I write inside a five now and I input whatever number, the number is going to be always summed up to five. So whatever number I input is going to be summed up to five. So this number that we just input here is called an argument. And arguments are basically just ways to set up options for objects. Now, for example, the print object has as an argument the name that is going to display it in the console, and uh, the plus operator takes as an argument the number that is going to sum by default to whatever comes inside. And the same goes also for the minus operator. So for example, if we say minus five, whatever comes inside is going to be diminished by five. Now let's note one thing. If I connect another integer number box to the right inlet, so to the cold inlet of this object, and I change the number in the cold inlet, so I change basically the variable b inside of our plus operator, now this five has been overridden. It doesn't exist anymore. So if I now input two here, it's going to be two plus two. So this five actually doesn't exist anymore inside the object, but graphically is not going to change. It's not going to show us graphically that this number is actually changed, but it is indeed. So every time we modify the cold inlet of the plus operator, we are going to override its argument. And this is also valid, of course, for the minus operator. And in general, for max objects, they usually have arguments that get overridden by whatever comes inside their inputs. But how do we know which arguments an object takes? Because we could not know uh, by default that this object, the plus operator, takes a number as an argument to be summed to the input, right? So this can be done in several ways. I want to show you the first one. So with the patch unlocked, I click on the object I want to check and I go here on the sidebar, so the right toolbar, and I click on reference. So reference basically gives us an overview on all the arguments and the messages accepted by the object and also which similar objects exist in Max. So this is actually very cool. Now, uh, we don't go for the moment inside the messages yet, but I want to show you that up here, there is a bar that says arguments after the description of the object. So we also have a description of the object that say, are two numbers, outputs the result. 
And then we got arguments. Now, if I click on this one, we even get a little explanation on what this argument means. So sets the initial value to be added to a number received in the left inlet. A float argument causes the numbers to be added as floats. Well, this is something that we're going to see in the next video, but the first sentence is actually what we care about. Sets the initial value to be added to a number received in the left inlet, which is the hot one. So great, every object has its own reference. For example, if I click now on the integer number box, you can see that it gives me also the reference with all the messages and attributes. Now we don't even care about what attributes and messages are for the moment, we're going to see that in the next videos. But this is how we know which arguments the objects take. Let's try again actually with the print object. Let's go to reference, identifier. So the argument of the print object, it is its identifier on the max console as the little description tells us. Cool. So this was a brief introduction to arguments in Max. We're going to see arguments all the time in Max. And also it's important to keep in mind that every time we change the value in the cold inlet, we are actually changing the value of the argument. This is, for example, not the case for the print object because it doesn't have any cold inlets, but this is mostly how many Max objects work. So when we change the value in the cold inlets, we are modifying the values of their arguments. So this was it for this lesson. We are going to encounter arguments all the time, so don't worry too much about memorizing them and well done so far. So see you in the next lesson when I'm going to show you a very cool feature of Max. Ciao.